Daddy, are you working? to me in the golden fields the sword of darkness now you wield as the wheel begins another course fill me with your primal force seeker of truth nature's alchemist crowned with the great Fire rages in my heart. 
Sunday here from Open Pagan Church. Welcome to another broadcast. We are, surprisingly enough, coming to you this morning with a relatively decent upstream, amazingly enough, after all of the uh, rain that we've gotten here in north central Texas. Um, my heart and prayers and energies go out to those who have really had a bad go of it in this rainy season here in north central Texas. Uh, other parts of the world as well, of course, but um, wow, been kind of crazy here. So, what is, <clears throat> oh, um, quick public announcement. We had talked about we were going to try to do a interview series where we could bring people on in the morning here on Open Pagan Church and do live interviews. We did test it. Um, my computer can handle it. Facebook bandwidth cannot. Um, Clint and I as if you've looked at the Open Pagan Church site as of late, you'll see where he and I attempted to do a uh, streaming test. We attempted to do a streaming test on the Open Pagan site, and it failed miserably. Um, combination between my uplink bandwidth out here in the country where we now live and the overall load balancing that Facebook does, we were not able to do the live interviews. So what I'll try to do is um, figure out maybe if we can't do a video interview, <coughs> maybe we can do just a Skype phone in interview without trying to upload two video streams. We will test that out over the next week and see how that comes out. Well, good morning to everyone who has joined. Welcome, like I say, to Open Pagan Church. Our topic uh, was given to me by a buddy of mine um, named Matt. Work with him, wonderful fella. He said, what about healers? and the price they pay. Um, what about healers and the, and, the, and the price they pay? Well, <coughs> first off, you have to, we, we need to kind of talk about the type of healer that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about um, medical physicians, doctors, nurses, the people in the medical field. Um, goddess knows they pay a buttload price both physically, emotionally and mentally. I'm talking about, and I'm not talking about the empath. Every, every, everybody you meet nowadays um, they're an empath. Well, I'm not even going to go down that road because um, the bullshit meter tends to ping just a little bit off the scale because um, most of them don't even know the definition of a empath. Empaths are not healers. Um, healers, sorry, my chair pad has um, gotten a little crazy, a little crooked. Um, anyway, healers have empathic abilities. Let's put it that way. But the price healers pay, and the type of healers I'm talking about are 
um, energy manipulators. Yes, some that do Reiki are true energy healers. Those that do um, holistic Christology, such as I do, people who do trigger point energy, people who do energy manipulation. There is a environmental energy manipulation that is done. Um, a very amazing study. And as my chosen path of shamanism, one of the things that I have always taught my students is how to be a window. Don't worry about shields, don't worry about trying to filter all of the negative that you're pulling from those around you, but try to be a window. Let those energies pass through you. Now, that being said, there is no such thing as 100% pass through. Unfortunately, you're going to absorb some of it. We are human beings. We are over um, two-thirds water, liquid-based. And bless its heart, the blood of the mother, water, does absorb just damn near everything. <coughs> but the topic of healers <coughs> and the cost they pay, right? Well, when... When you're working in a healing situation, it's not something that healers just do on command. When you are given the task, if you will, the gift, the curse of a healer, you feel. You feel others in spite of yourself. There are earth healers, there are tree healers, um, people, human healers, animal healers. I have worked energy on animals and I assure you it is different than working energy on a human. I have worked energy on trees that's kind of fun but it is different from working energy on humans now people you talk to you'll get this hard oh, doesn't bother me I'm Mr. Healer dun 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 well uh, you're as full of shite as a Christmas turkey everything you do Everything we do, everything that healers do, have a major cause and effect, be it both positive and or negative. And one of the things I want to remind a lot of the newcomers, and yes, I keep having to scroll up the stupid uh, line feed because um, <coughs> Facebook has gotten extremely stupid and doesn't auto scroll. But anyway, I digress. Me? Digress? Never. Anyway, our our path, our job as healers, does have a cost. We give of ourselves. And the point that I want to try to make to a lot of the newcomers that come in, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that come in to the pagan philosophy that are looking for a path, that are trying to find what fits them. If, um, if this is, if you're watching one of our broadcasts and you're new to the pagan philosophy or you're practicing and learning your healer path, now, please understand, you don't have to be a shaman to be a healer. Yeah, I've, I've heard some um, people that arrogance have their head stuck up their own Watusi, and they think that the only way you can be a healer is to be a shaman. Absolutely not. 
I have met some amazing Christian energy workers that use their faith to conduct their energy. And that's just what pagan energy healers, uh, pagan healers do, shaman healers, witch healers, druid healers, fey healers, all of the other thousands of different denominations there are in the pagan philosophy. We use our faith and our energy and our ability to manipulate and adjust that energy to work with healing others. So for those newbies that are coming into the pagan philosophy and for those of you that think you might know it all, you don't have to be a pagan or a shaman or anything to be a healer. I have met, and this may sound like an extreme oxymoron, but I have met some professed atheists who actually had some amazing energy who for, who for whatever reason for, were wonderful healers. They were able to conduct energy, to manipulate energy, to absorb it, to send it, channel it, pass it through. And it doesn't take a whole lot once you understand the basics. That's not what this broadcast is about. I'm not here to teach you how to be a healer. But the topic this morning on the cost we pay. If anyone has ever done an entire day of holistic Christology, trigger point energy, massage. Yeah, massage. Actual hands-on massage is a form of energy healing. Not for everyone. There are uh, massage, uh, mas, 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 masseuses out there. Masseuses? Mas, anyway, there are people that perform massages that use zero energy. However, uh, Sean says, a pain, a lot of pain. Yeah, well, true that. But by the end of the day, and I can speak from this from years of uh, experience. By the end of the day, irregardless of how many times you've, you've run cleanse, how many times you've uh, purified yourself and gone out and hugged a tree or sit on the mother or laid on the mother or, you know, gone out and done a sun cleanse or whatever, at the end of the day, you need a shower. You, I mean, seriously, the, the physical goo that you feel on your skin irregardless of how much you've cleansed or purified yourself throughout the day. When you've done an entire day of healing there is a payment. There is a payment. Everything we do is a cause and effect. Um, don't care if you've been doing it over 20 some odd years as I have or just starting out in your first year of training there is always a payment on both sides yeah so the cost we pay the cost we pay varies right there are some that I have known through the years that seem to think that seem to think that they have to absorb and hang on to everything that they're pulling off of other people. There are those that, by the way, how's the neck, Don? The neck is still driving me crazy. Sean, thank you very much. I have yet to find a good chiropractor that can actually pop it for me. But anyway, there you go. Um, there are those that for some reason seem to think that it is their job 
to absorb and hang on to all the negativity, all the crap, and everything that just happens to come across. It's not. There are very simple ways to channel, get rid of, get rid of that energy. <coughs> now, I will say this. Listen to this real close. If you're puttering around the house and you're halfway listening to what I'm saying, stop. Listen to this. It's relatively easy to get rid of that energy that you have absorbed from the people around you. However, this is the part I wanted you to, wanted you to listen to. Don't use the word purge in your cleansing. I say again, do not use the word purge in your cleansing. Everybody that I have ever seen use the word purge in their cleansing. By the end of a 24-hour period, they end up praying to the porcelain commode goddess. Myself included. Use words like cleanse, purify, flow, absorb positive energy. Purify the negative energy and flow it out through the feet back into the mother. Or if you're one of those that refuse to send negative energy to the mother, send the negative energy out of the crown of the upper chakra back off into the cosmos. Sun cleanse. Do whatever you do. But folks, do not purge. Purging is nasty. Yeah. Anyway, onward. Yes, I be vaping. Now, one of the things that has always fascinated me about healers, and I'm not a professed animal healer, I'm not a professed earth healer, tree healer, uh, I work with humans. I've worked on animals, I've worked on trees, I've sat and assisted in positive energy and cleansing of Mother Earth. But I work mostly with humans, yes, men, women, children, whatever. And one of the things that healers do unconsciously when they're in a crowd of people when healers are in a crowd of people it gets rather interesting because sometimes we end up having to block ourselves off from being able to feel others now when I was younger going through training and what have you even way back when I was a kid and my mother was teaching me how to use energy and feel energy and feel the things of people around me. We used to sit in a restaurant and she would very quietly point somebody out. She would say, what do you feel from that person? Right or wrong, indifferent, regardless of whether the person realizes it, what do you feel from that person? And as I opened up and as I realized that all of this little snippets of things that I was getting from people around me it wasn't an attack and I'm going to cover that in a little bit the attack if you will paranoia but anyway A lot of the price 
healers pay for being healers is learning how to shut off certain emotions energies from other people you have those out there that are what we call energy vampires if you will they they want to reach out and drop tentacles and other people you know suck on their energy that's a topic for another discussion but as healers we feel we feel things we don't want to feel we seem to know things we don't want to know and I'm already seeing people post in the live chat I don't do crowds I don't do crowds for multiple reasons I'll avoid groups of people if I can I get it I understand my students that have followed in under oath to me they're taught how to deal with crowds um, our particular grove we work with crowds we work with large numbers of people we work with either one or ten I generally try not to work with more than 20 at a time it gets a little overwhelming a little taxing if you know what I mean and some people might say well what does this have to do with pagan church a lot as pagan core we believe in magic we, we believe in energy we live with it we work with it magic is energy energy is magic it is what it is and I'm gonna say this um, according to the timer we are 27 minutes into the broadcast and I'm gonna say this ladies and gentlemen there is no such thing as black magic magic is magic energy is energy magic is magic and energy is energy it's how you use it as to whether it's white or black or good or bad or positive or negative energy is like a gun energy is like a gun it has the ability to do good to do self-defense to help others or to hurt others magic is the same way what is magic but the manipulation of energy anyway there you go that said took one minute so we'll see what kind of light that lights up the fire off of some people and how many people actually miss it but let's go back to healers whether you're a witch a shaman a druid fay whatever you're you find yourself in a group of people now I'm not talking about the non healers the non healers that are empath that feel everything around them and have absolutely no idea what to do with it for people like that I recommend you find a teacher that can help you deal with your empathic abilities you may not be a healer just because you're an empath doesn't mean you're a healer if you seem to naturally know what to do with the energy you might be a healer not my job to say but if you find yourself that walk into a crowd of people and all of a sudden you're getting bombarded from let's say it's a crowd of 20 and you're getting bombarded from 20 different directions with energy and thoughts and emotions and what have you um, you don't know what to do with it find yourself a teacher find yourself a teacher and get them to help you the problem eh, not a problem but the thing with being a healer when you're working in large groups of people is knowing what to do with that energy because the cost can be very taxing it can be very tiring like I say you don't have to be a healer to be able to feel crowds and people 
the healer tends to know automatically at the core what to do with that energy. Now I'm not going to turn this into a class of shamanism. That's not what it's about. When I say taxing, let's get into the uh, deeper part of the price that healers can pay. Most especially those who have had no training. Those who have had to come up the hard way and learn it the hard way uh, how to be healers. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to take just a moment. I'm going to mute the mic for just a moment. I unfortunately have to clear my sinuses. So we're going to take about a 90 second break, maybe a 30 second break, give folks a chance to uh, go to the potty. It is going to be quiet. I'm going to switch over to the other screen just a moment. But take about 30 to 60 seconds, 90 seconds, go privy, do whatever you need to do. I'll be right back with you. All right, much better. Well, if you're still away, you're not going to miss anything. So, <clears throat> again, our topic is healers and the price they pay, right? A couple of examples. A lot of hard work and a very sore body. Yep. So, let's say, <clears throat> and let's 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 presume some unavoidable situations. Well, most all situations are avoidable, but let's say um, on the times that. I get to go home to Scotland for a couple of weeks or a period of time and I find myself in an airport or stuck in a very long metal tube with wings on it with 200 plus people an airplane if you don't know what I'm talking about or on a bus with loads of people I've heard back from people that have been in those situations that I've heard back from people in those situations that just really almost got tossed into a panic attack. The energy and the emotional chatter, yes, some people can actually hear the emotional chatter. I'm not going to necessarily say we're reading minds, but you're hearing the emotional chatter of, I don't know, 50, 75, 100 people around you sitting in an airport or a bus terminal or anything of that nature, train station, whatever, in large groups of people, excuse me. You may feel bombarded with energy from all different forms and different directions but you've never learned how to disassociate yourself from those emotions, feelings, and chatter. And I'm not talking about shields. Shields require energy. It, it really takes a lot of energy, people, to build up a concrete wall around you 
the problem is when you put your shields up generally typically you don't really know what's going on around you you can't feel if somebody comes up behind you you can't feel if someone enters your your personal space if you've got concrete wall shields up and then the always come back answer is what the hell do you do if you don't put shields up I bet you are tired after all of that. Um, I was going to attempt to clean up the yard here and try to get the grass cut before the rains hit, but um, it did not happen. Did not happen at all. So, um, Debbie says, bubble. Right? Uh, Fill with pleasant, calming energy. Bubbles are good. Um, a bubble of energy is relatively easy to do. It's a thought process, and like I say, I'm not going to turn this into a shaman training course. But you can just, ding, put a thin bubble of energy around you that keeps out the, the mutter and the chatter. And I generally like to find a corner. Um, in hospital waiting rooms, hospital wait or uh, doctor's office waiting rooms are the world's worst for healers. So I generally find a corner with my back to a wall. And no, see, 36 hours of mowing and weed eating, uh, 36 acres, I'm sorry, of mowing and weed eating. I don't do that anymore. I do good to take care of the two acres we have here. Anyway, um, doctor's offices, airports, bus stations, train stations. I find a corner. When I walk in, especially in an airport, by the time I have gone through security, and gone through the frisking and you know had everything gone through and been questioned nine ways from Sunday all I want is a corner I try to find a corner uh, next to a wall up against a wall and I can sit there and relax for a minute and just kind of breathe and generally at that point Here's the point I was going to make a while ago. Some of you are probably seriously going to disagree. There's a surprise. But in my experience and in my past, as a part of self-training, I will get into very large groups of people like an airport, a bus terminal, train station, something like that. It, try to find a wall to sit up against or something a post or something and I'll take about five minutes to just breathe and relax breathing is good hyperventilating is not but just breathe for a few minutes and try to relax then I will do point reading. Sitting back in a group of people, I will, without looking directly at the person, because bless their heart, it really makes them uncomfortable when you're sitting there dead staring at a person that may be sitting on the other side of the room. But I will direct my field of energy towards your particular individual for just about 90 seconds. 
maybe two minutes if they're interesting. But I will direct my field of energy to different individuals to see what I pick up from them. That lessens the cost of being tired, being wore out when I get on the plane, or being wore the hell out when I get off the plane. It lessens the cost of the bombardment of the energies around you. Now that being said, a lot of people a lot of people might say that's a invasion of privacy. Um, I don't get into their heads. I just let their energy flow. A lot of people may say that's an invasion of privacy. That's wrong. Blah, 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 blah. Get over it. Like I say, I'm not getting into their heads and their thoughts. What I'm doing is, is allowing myself to be able to lower the cost to me of being a healer being in large groups of people. Now what this allows me to do is to be able to focus with energy and generally when I'm doing it I'll be looking at the floor or I'll do like so many others I'll have my phone out and I'll be staring at my phone. Right? The problem is there's nothing on it. Do you know that the black screen, the black mirror screen of a phone is one of the best scrying mirrors you can ever find? Those of you may not know that. I can use my phone and the blackness of it when it's in locked position. I can use it as a scrying mirror and allow me to be able to focus and pinpoint my energies into particular different directions in a group situation. Now, what about those and there are more of these types of people there are more of these types of people than there are trained energy healers. These are the types of people that don't know how to get past the bombardment of emotional chatter, chaotic group energy and what have you. <coughs> there are those individuals that case in point they walk up on someone a friend or whatever and they give them a hug or um, they walk up and you know just pat them on the shoulder hey how's it going um, you know like Matt sometimes at work I'll be sitting at my desk just about ready to pop somebody's head like a pimple and he'll walk up and put his hand on his shoulder and in about 30 seconds I actually feel a bit better but he has he has un, unfortunately for him tried to absorb my anxieties of being at my present job tick he has absorbed that out of me and not bothered to discharge it of which I've asked him <clears throat> multiple times dude you really don't need to be trying to absorb my crap without discharging it somewhere, somehow. Therein lies, right? Love the phone trick. Anyway, therein lies one of the big problems of people that have never been taught how to discharge that negative energy, how to get rid of it. And they don't know they can. Or like I said earlier, for some weird reason, they feel like it's their responsibility to absorb it and hang on to it. It's not. 
it's not your responsibility it's you, you you're not required to hang on to that crap get rid of it it's not yours you shouldn't have to carry it in fact realistically speaking you don't even have to carry your own crap you can get rid of it there are ways to discharge negative energies in fact over on the live with the shaman channel I've done multiple videos of how to discharge and get rid of negative energy all right Sean's got a really good idea absorb it like a sponge and convert it to positive energy absolutely we have spoken about that multiple times in the Grove of the Celtic Shaman and in circles that we used to have on property some of the training I used to do on property was how to convert negative to positive and send it back out to the cosmos <clears throat> with a little bit of training you don't have to be a shaman to do that you don't have to be a shaman to be a healer and I find it even most interesting now this is one of the topics that I want to cover uh, one of the conversations I want to cover how do I put this just because you feel energy does not mean you're an empath pardon me if you don't believe me look up the true definition of an empath just because you feel emotion doesn't necessarily make you an empath just because you hear emotional chatter doesn't make you a clairvoyant because I can see it now people are going to be saying on Facebook well Don you know Don told me if I could if I could hear emotional chatter I'm a clairvoyant no if you want to know what a damn clairvoyant it is go look up the actual definition it is natural Okay, Under, understand this. It's natural for human beings and other living creatures to feel energy. To be emotionally perceptive to other people's emotions. Our pets do it all the time. Um tucks my little cat I'm his human when it's convenient but there have been multiple times that I may have had a full blown out um, sinus infection uh, the flu cold whatever you call it and when I've got the flu I don't like to sleep in bed I like to sleep on the couch don't ask me why it's just it's a, it's a thing but anyway I'll be asleep on the couch and Tux will invariably get up on the couch with me and put his nose right in mine now I may be dead ass asleep and I wake up to these two beady little eyes of this black fluffy fuzzball looking at me going dude really but now on days that I'm not sick he's perfectly content either laying between uh, me and mama on the couch or uh, sometimes I get fortunate enough he actually gets up in my lap but if I'm sick oh boy he is all in my face dogs are the same way dogs know when their people are sick nervous scared anxious emotions whatever our 
and animals around us, animals in general. Humans are the same way. It is natural. And I, I, I have never been able to stress this enough. It is natural for human beings to do what human beings naturally do. And I'm not talking about screw others over. That's, that's, that's a learned thing, screwing people over. It's taught by other people screwing other people over. Therein is a topic for another discussion, isn't it? But anyway. So the fact that you feel energies, the fact that you might feel or hear emotional chatter, that doesn't make you an empath. It doesn't make you a healer. It does not make you clairvoyant. Oh my God. It simply makes you human. All the gods and goddesses in the world forbid you're human. Humans do what we do. I'm not going to go in to what makes you a witch. I'm not going to go into what makes you a shaman or a fae or a druid or anything else. Each of us, some people, some people are more perceptive than others. Some people simply, it's been raised out of them. It's been trained out of them. You come across these people that have been taught their entire lives if you can't see it, touch it, it's not real. I'm going to say that again. If you can't see it and you can't touch it, it's not real. But you have to believe in God. Wait. Wait. You can't see God. You can't touch God. So you're telling me if it's if I can't touch it and I can't feel it, it's not real. So anyway, these kids, not just today, but period, kids are raised. If you can't see it, you can't touch it, it's not real. Well, we all know that humans are relatively easy to program. We are. I hate to say it. I hate to admit it we are humans <laughs> yeah sheeple s h e e p l e sheeple people are sheep people are cattle right we are you you get a buttload group of people together and one person takes off screaming right They've, they've done this in crowd control study. It's funny. One person in a group of about 20 some odd people will start screaming at the top of their lungs and take off running like a bat out of hell. 90% of the group of people will follow them without question. Anyway. Um, I saw up a little bit where Sean said titles. Yes. But the whole cost of the healer does not have to be that damaging. It really doesn't. The, the whole cost of a healer even those who are non-healers that find themselves in large groups of people that throw themselves into panic attacks because of claustrophobia, right? Claustrophobia is a big problem with people in large crowds. Antisocialistic. Antisocialistic doesn't make you a bad person. It just means you are anti-socialistic. You're not into the big social crowds. Okay, big deal. People want to make a big deal out of the shit. They want to slap a syndrome on everything. That's where the term anti-socialistic come from. 
Well, the problem is, if you want to know the true meaning of anti-socialism, look it up. The definition will scare the hell out of you. Um, true, 100% untrained empaths. True, 100% untrained clairvoyance. I feel sorry for these people. I was very fortunate as I was raised. My mother and then later my stepmom, the two of them raised me to be able to handle the energy variances of society, large groups of people, to be able to communicate within large groups of people, right? I find my big anxieties at things like job interviews. I hate job interviews. But just as a public speaker standing up in front of 10, 20, 50, 100 people, I have no problem with that. I have no problem interacting with the crowd. But and I want to try to kind of start winding down with this. We're 20 minutes past the hour. We're approaching our one hour. What are, yes, anxiety, PTSD, um, bipolar, yeah, oh boy. But believe it or not, through training, you can get past some forms of PTSD uh, some forms of bipolar um, with the right training. Now, I'm never going to tell anyone to stop seeing your psychiatrist and stop taking your medications given to you by the psychiatrist. I'm never going to do that. But with the right training and the right guidance, you can get a lot of that under control most of the time. There are some people out there whose chemicals are out of balance enough that, um, bless their heart, there's just no help for them. Anyway, healers, people that instinctively, automatically, without thought, without forethought, just automatically make people feel better just by being around them, either through guided manipulation energy manipulation through um, my biggest enjoyment is trigger point energy and holistic Christology okay and I'm not going to go into my other forms of healing this isn't the forum for it but the important thing is to try to minimize the self cost as we get older, we live in more and more pain because our bodies are paying us back for the stupid stuff we did when we were younger. Um, people who live with chronic pain, chronic back pain, fibromyalgia, uh, and the other forms of chronic pain that are out there today that have been caused by the steroids and the crap that are put in our meats and our foods that we eat today. These people that are healers, I really truly feel for them. Right? So, yes, touch. So your different forms of healing will always come at a, at a cost. It's up to you to seek out the training and the exercises and the things that you can do to minimize that cost. But it does kind of come down to being able to be true to yourself and realize your own boundaries. There are some things that your body simply cannot do. There are things your body simply can do that you may not have learned yet. So my recommendation to you is learn. 
research. Listen to other people. It doesn't necessarily mean do what they tell you to, but listen to other people. Listen to when they talk. You may learn something from them. I'd like to see some more topics, definitely. And I hope you have a good week. And when this video was recorded, it was in Maybond weekend. So, blessed Maybond to you. Have a great day, a wonderful weekend. Thank you for watching Open Pagan Church.